Okay, <clears throat> so uh, just a video on some of the upgrades that I've done to my Silex 7. <clears throat> you know, I'm in this weird place where things are kind of starting to get busier with, uh, with our products and can't quite afford a new machine, or at least I don't really feel comfortable going into debt. <clears throat> so I decided to make a couple of upgrades that will hopefully uh you know make it easier to to make the parts we need and especially if we need to make them more often so the coolant system and the chip management on this machine are pretty bad uh so um i was using a bilge boom which is like something you put in the bilge of a boat to soak up oil it's kind of like the special plastic that absorbs oil but not water. So I was using that in the tank and it took up quite a bit of room. So I decided to upgrade to the next gen see-through, you know, coolant, uh, whatever they call it, coalescer. So I installed that right into the tank. And uh, I also added a second coolant pump uh, for a Swarf Diablo which is the second thing I've added to the machine to hopefully help with the chip management. So I added this. Uh, this is obviously for the next gen. This is coolant out. Uh, this big fitting over here I added for coolant in. This is a limit switch, which I'll explain in a second. Obviously this is power for the next gen. So the limit switch, you know, I there's not very much coolant capacity in this machine, so I wanted to um, make sure that in the event that the coolant runs low, I want this secondary Swarf Diablo system to shut down to leave the uh, bare minimum coolant for the main cooling pump to run. So this is a, a float switch in here, and uh, I put it on this threaded rod so that I can adjust it um, to to be where, like I said, the minimum just above the minimum pickup line for this pump. Uh, I haven't wired that that part in yet. I'm just going to run without it at first. Um, and yeah, hopefully this um, next gen will uh, be a big improvement. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. And uh, same with the Swerf Diablo. So uh, we'll go around to the back of the machine here. I'm going to uh, leave the uh, next gen attached to the uh, cabinet door for now. Obviously that's not ideal, but I don't have a lot of other options on the machine right now for, for where to mount it. So in the cabinet, I had to add a uh, another uh, relay for the extra pump. And this is a breaker for that pump. And then I'm using a uh, Siemens logo and these are new to me I thought I would buy one and try it out and honestly I I can't even believe they exist they're like a hundred bucks or something and it's basically a little tiny programmable logic controller so normally you know we make all our own electronics so for this the system to do what I wanted it to do you know I originally I was like well I'm gonna have to design a circuit board and and uh you know, program it to do all the things we want it to do. Well, this little Siemens logo is just the coolest little thing. You don't even really have to know ladder logic. There's like a diagram mode when you're programming it that it just could not be easier. So so basically this thing is going to monitor the pump, main pump signal, and also the green light. So you, there's quite a bit to it, but the, the simplified version is you know, once it sees the main pump turn on, and if it sees the green light on, which means it's in program, it will automatically turn on the second coolant pump, which will run the Diablo system. And then even if the main pump shuts down, like during a tool change, the Diablo, Swarf Diablo will keep running even during tool changes, because I wanted to, you know, take that extra time to, to clear more chips out of the enclosure. So um, it won't shut the second pump down until the green light turns off. And even at that point, it's got a two minute delay. So, you know, at the end of the program, it's gonna run a full cycle through all the, the Swarf Diablo nozzles 
uh, before it shuts it down. Um, you know, and that like literally it took like 10 minutes to program all that inside this uh, PLC. So that's basically what I did. Um, doesn't sound like much, but of course that took quite a long time to actually uh, wire into the cabinet. So the, um, and the shop is an absolute disaster right now. So um, the Swarf Diablo, it's kind of sitting up here. And basically, you know, the pump pumps into that and then it's got like a Geneva mechanism inside of it where it's just going to supply coolant to one port at a time. So in the machine, uh, I've got a six port version. So there you place these little nozzles around the machine and you can individually aim all those little ball jets. So there's three on the bottom and then six along the sides. And so the idea, because I don't have a lot of coolant and I don't have a lot of pressure, don't have a lot, of, don't have a lot of capacity. It just runs one of them at a time, which I thought was perfect. I was in the middle of doing my own thing. I had ordered all this hollow aluminum rod to make some like spray rails along the sides of the cabinet, and uh, I was going to use like solenoid valves to to switch to only run one at a time. So this came along kind of at a, a pretty opportune time. So uh, giving it a try, I'm kind of kind of excited to try it out. I'm literally going to have it running here in about uh, probably 10 minutes. So I'm going to fill up the coolant tank and we're going to try out the next gen and then we'll try the Swarf Diablo out and see uh, see what it does. Okay, we've got the coolant tank filled back up. It's uh, only about 7% but uh, this will evaporate towards that 8% uh, that I'd be looking for, so I'm not going to worry about it uh, at the moment. But uh, you can see this float doing its thing. It's actually pretty neat. It's surprising how effective that is. <clears throat> and this is the most coolant I've ever probably had in this tank. I also added this uh, uh, quantity gauge so that I'll be able to keep an eye on the coolant level since now it'll be a little bit more uh, important. But uh, Everything so far seems to be going well. We'll go around to the back of the unit. Uh, I'm not thrilled with having this on the door for, you know, a bunch of different reasons. Uh, obviously, you know, liquids and electri uh, electricity don't mix, but I mean, the way this is sitting on here and suspended over the edge, I don't, I don't actually think there's much of a risk of getting any uh, liquid into the electrical cabinet, but I don't want the weight hanging on the door but for right now this is kind of the kind of the best solution but uh, it's pretty neat to see it's already even though this coolant was uh, brand new it's already filtering some junk out of there so I'm gonna put a timer on it maybe let it run every night for like 10 or 15 minutes or something and uh, so now I'm gonna test out the, the Diablo system which I'm pretty excited about so we'll check that out next so, this is kind of the idea. They'll kind of alternate around using the different nozzles. And I, I'm already uh, pretty happy with the flow out of my, you know, tiny little pump. And uh, you can see it cycles between the valves. So I gotta aim all those little jets. But you can see it's doing a pretty darn good job of kind of flushing, even though nothing is aimed. I'm actually waiting for some more powerful magnets. Some of them, I was using magnets I had already and they're not, not strong enough. Like this, these magnets are good. Some of these other ones aren't. But, uh, yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy. I'm pretty excited actually to see uh, how this works when I'm actually machining. So, so far so good. So, now with my main pump running and the Diablo system running, you, know, you can see it took, took quite a chunk out of the tank. So, you know, once the bin starts filling up with slurp, it'll be even slower to get back, so it'll be even worse. So we're gonna shut everything off and then see, you know, hopefully a lot of that was just priming the system with cooling. I'm going to uh, 
shut it off and see where the coolant comes through. Okay, so I just finished a little production run of uh, 14 of these case halves, and uh, the Swarf Diablo uh, did its thing. There's uh, just some little pockets of chips here and there, but for the most part, uh, it did quite a good job of, uh, you know, keeping all the chips out. And I got some aimed at the way covers, and it kept those clean. Normally these are uh, just packed with chips after, uh, after a run like that. So uh, I'm pretty impressed, actually. Uh, you know, I convinced them, like you can see how much is built up on the fourth axis and the uh, motor cover back there. But I convinced them to uh, to make me a six-port version, but I'm almost uh, considering modifying that back to 12. And, uh, you know, I could see that if I added, like, another six nozzles, that it would actually... Uh, like I'd be able to have this thing completely clean every time you run it, which I think would be pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, this is pretty much exceeding my expectations, uh, so I'm pretty happy. Okay, so I had a thought uh, about, you know, the Swarf Diablo doesn't obviously clean on top of the fourth and on top of the servo cover and stuff like that. and. Uh, it made me remember that uh, the AccuBlast actually has a, uh, a cleaning function so you can set the travel limits for cleaning. So I'm gonna try and uh, see uh, how effective this might be. So if I just go into a warm up and we're gonna just do we're just going to do, so spindle X, Y, Z, spindle X, Y, and we'll just do that and that with a warm up. So then I'm going to go cycle start, and so that's going to start right away. So I'm going to start moving the bed around, pulling out a corner, and if I turn the coolant pump on, the Swarf Diablo system also starts up because of how I have the, uh, the uh, little mini PLC program. So now we're just going to set this to cleaning mode, so, which is Twitch 4. So now we're going to let this run and we're going to see how effective this combination might be at uh, basically fully cleaning out this uh, machine. You might have some trouble with the uh, clearing the fourth axis stuff off and looking at it. If I, uh, if I set the travel limits differently on the servo, I think I'd be able to sneak around and, and get better behind the, the servo or the fourth axis itself. So. We'll have to try that out. Because, yeah, we definitely need a bit more travel there. So, I took apart, I tried to do it the uh, simple way first. I tried to just rotate it one set of screw holes, but then the travel, I couldn't get the nozzle rotated this, this way far enough. So it's quite simple if you want to have custom travels uh, in your AccuBlast, you can take the top cover off. And then you can reset the relationship between this notch and the line on the servo pulley. So basically you just uh, loosen the set screws on this pulley and rotate the shaft inside to orient it to where you want it to be at zero. So when this line is pointed at the shaft, this is at zero. So from this position, it'll go plus 90 and negative 90. So I wanted, I wanted to get a little bit more travel out of it this way. So we're gonna go about 45 degrees. You can see the notch is about 45 degrees back. Normally it's pointed right down here at the bottom, which means when the servo's at zero degrees, then this guy is at zero degrees. So now, the way I have it now, when we're at zero degrees, it'll sit like this. 
So we'll try that out on the machine and see if that helps. Okay, so now with the turret reclocked, this is currently sitting at 81 degrees. It's only got a maximum of 90 degrees, but that's about perfect. I mean, I can't possibly have a tool any shorter than that in there. So we're gonna call that good. Uh, so now we're gonna retry this. We're gonna start the warm up again. So, so now we're going to reactivate the cleaning mode and see if this does any better. So there you go. Actually, I might have to turn that down a little bit because it's going to come right out that window. But this should give us a little bit better cleaning action. So now you can see it's going to try and do a little bit better cleaning off the top of the fourth. It's obviously probably not going to be perfect, but uh, I think it's actually doing going to do a pretty reasonable job here. So we're going to give this a few minutes and uh, you know let the uh, Swerve Diablo try and uh, catch up to what it's knocking off the table here, and we'll see. This might be. Uh, this might be a really good end of the day cleaning solution here. We'll see. Okay. So uh, I let it run for just over 10 minutes on, you know, with this on uh, cleaning mode. And I mean, it did a pretty reasonable job. Obviously it didn't really get the end of the fourth. It hangs quite a bit off the edge of the table, but uh, like really quite good. You know, it wouldn't, you know, I'll blow it off, dry it off. But uh, I mean, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to leave the machine like this overnight. So, you know, at the end of the day, where I normally have to take the hose out and clean this out myself and splash myself and all the rest of it. I mean, this, uh, this combination seems to be uh, pretty darn good at, uh, at making it so that maybe we don't have to, you know, just set it to warm up mode, turn on cleaning, turn on the pumps. And, uh, you know, while we're cleaning up in the shop, this thing's basically just kind of cleaning itself. Pretty cool.